Hi again, and welcome to another Razorback screencast. In the last episode, we were painting the armor, and I think it came out pretty well. And there are going to be several parts of this bike we're probably going to want to UV map, and there's going to be a lot of parts maybe we don't want to UV map. But for now, since we're in the whole UV texturing mode, let's take a look at another uh, set of components that we're probably going to want to add some nuance details to via paint and that's the actual arms up here so before we jump in and start to UV map them there's one little tweak that I'd like to make if I lower one of these arms here we can sort of see that there's a little bit of a gap there we never really finished creating that hinge but what we can do is that we can go to the wireframe view and we can basically select that part and this part here too. And then in the wireframe view, we can see those components. We can actually see that all of the normals on the right side are inverted, they're all pointing inwards. So the first thing I think we'll do is select all of those and just reverse those normals. And then we can select that face at the end and this face right here and just extrude. Sort of push the part in and then I'm just going to select the face at the front of each one and use the normal move tool to push it back so it's sort of in the hinge. And I think that's all that's really necessary for cleanup for now. So these arms are pretty complex objects. They, uh, they have a lot of different curves. The large one here has a recess. The small arm has sort of a circular coupling. And uh, they can be challenging. I think we'll be okay. The first thing I'd like to look at is the large arm, just because it's one of the more complicated pieces. And, um, you know, astute viewers might realize that I've already mirrored the components to the left and right side, but that's actually not going to be a problem. So, first thing we have to figure out is how do we want to map this? So, I was looking at this earlier. And I started to think about this loop of polygons that goes around these sides. That's probably a good place to get some continuous texturing. Um, the other thing to think about is, do we want to have a seam um, along the highlighted polygons there? And I was thinking about it, and a seam right there would be okay. But maybe we can explore a couple different uh, techniques while looking into that. So the first thing that I'd like to do is map this cylindrically. So I'm just going to drag my test pattern onto the right arm and we can see what modeling this has done to the uh, native UVs. It's completely destroyed them. So at this point it's probably harmless to get rid of that UV tag. We don't need it. And since we already have these, this, this central band selected, uh, we can just start changing our mapping mode. So I'm going to change this to cylindrical mapping and go to my texture tool and we can see right now it's centered on the pivot which is nice but the orientation of the cylinder is not correct. So I'm just going to rotate that. And now the orientation is fine but is the seam where I want it? Um, Basically, if I'm going to texture this strip of polygons, I want to have control over where the seam is. Think of a, a piece of ribbon that you're joining to make a loop. It's, it's going to have a place where the start meets the end. It cannot be seamless. So we can see that seam if we sort of look at this cylinder. We can see that there's a green line right here right near that arrow. It's it's sort of a green arrow pointing downwards. 
and right now it's right here pointing along the x-axis so that means the seam will be right here it's a really visible spot I'd prefer if the seam were back here where it's almost less visible so what we can do is just rotate it until the x-axis points over there that way the strip of polygons will start here go all the way around seamlessly and then end back here just trying to hide the seam so now that we have those polygons selected and our our, our projection set up the way we want it we can go back to polygon mode with these selected with our tag selected and we just say assign UV coordinates go to our texture view we'll see that it has given us this uh, strip of polygons now because we just used an arbitrary cylindrical mapping you can see there's a fair amount of distortion happening right there especially between four five six so what we can do to fix this is just unwrap the UVs like we did in the last tutorial except this time it's a little trickier uh, if I were to select all of these polygons and just deselect one at the end and then do the relax command let's see what happens so in that case it actually worked really well I'm surprised what happens sometimes is the polygon that's not selected stays really small and all the other polygons get large or vice versa so if that happens what I typically do is grab some points and what I would do is I would select two points that I'd like to pin and then I would just say in the uh, relax UV tab I would say pin point selection and then you can actually uh, select all the polygons you want to relax and you just hit relax and the, the point selection right here stays pinned to demonstrate that in a different way if I were to pin these points and then go back to UV polygon mode and run relax again that didn't work quite well and these points should have stayed pinned well maybe I'm missing something but the point selection should have been pinned mm. oh no it did it's it stayed right there so if I were to pin these points instead you see that they stay still so anyway that's a, it's a whole lot of worry about nothing but we can see now that we have uh, it stretched out and the polygon sizes here in the UV map are pretty much proportional to the size they are in our 3d view or to put it another way and the distortion is gone so we can see as, as we drag it around here in the viewport we can actually see the different numbers move and everything is distortion free so I can just set that aside next we need to figure out how we want to map the rest of our objects it looks like the rest of it sort of inherited the cylindrical mapping that we were using earlier but we need to remap that anyway so what we can do is go back to polygon mode and use the fill selection so I think that's select fill selection or UF and you basically just select the top part because I already had this loop selected fill selection would stop there it sort of uses your current selection as a mask which is really handy so now that we have this it's it's it seems pretty obvious to me that we want to use flat mapping for this so what we can do is change our tag from UV mapping to flat and using our texture tool just sort of rotate it so that we're 90 degrees on the part just like that and then we can do assign UV coordinates again and this time we get this part flat so we can just rotate that into place so it looks a little more conveniently placed and then we can come in here and see that things are okay but we do have some uh, banding and distortion happening right here now partially this is because we haven't actually unwrapped the UVs yet or relaxed them rather but another part of it is just because we went flat and this polygon here is almost vertical so what I'll do is I plan on tearing this bit of polygons out so I'll select the loop of polygons right there and then I'm gonna grow my selection until you know what I actually just want to start with this loop and then I'm gonna hold shift while I use fill selection so I can select the inside polygons here as well and it's already in the correct mapping I just want to move it out of that shell so I get a separate piece 
And then we can see that we have a seam there, but it's going to help us with the mapping. We're just going to do them all at the end. And then we can basically uh, change this back to flat mapping once again. And this time we select the uh, everything that's uh, left. So that's going to be, if I select this loop, it's going to be everything else. So I just click there. Tags, assign UV coordinates. And now we have this part. So with an object like this, I, th I think from my experience, I feel pretty safe about selecting all of these and just using the relax option. And everything sort of spaces itself out. It looks okay. Nothing looks too warped. And when we go back to our perspective view, we can see here that the only thing that looks kind of weird is that the inner part here, it seems like it's flipped. So let's make sure our normals are pointing in the right direction. They are. And if we go back to our UV map, perhaps this needs to be flipped on the V. If we go back, we can see that that looks a lot better. Now one, two, three, four. So this is now completely mapped. But what if we wanted to do this over, but we didn't want to have seams here? So we were okay with a seam right here by the back plate, but we didn't want a seam between the, these teal numbers and these sort of, uh, I guess, teal and turquoise numbers. Well, what we can do is go back to our UV map and say, okay, so we essentially want this band and this part to be the same. So see how nice and even relaxed everything is right here? We can make those the same map, but I'll show you what happens. Let's go back to flat mode, flat mapping, and assign the UV coordinates once again. So what this does is it gives us our, our face plate, and all of the other polygons are sort of vertical along the edges. So if we relax this, we can see it works but not really, because some of the polygons here are flipped in on each other, and you can get this to work if you cut seams at the right spots, but in general, we're really pushing the limit here on how our UVs can be evenly unfolded. So let's undo, go back to what we had, and just try to pack these into a neat space. Let's see, where was... Okay, so we have this selected. Go to our UV view. And so we have all these objects and we want to pack them into this dark square, which is our UV space. So we know we can go to optimal mapping and we can just say realign, equalize island size with a spacing of about 5% and it packs them all in. But this seems really non-optimal. And the reason here is because this piece, this shell is so long that it's it's monopolizing the space and it's preventing the other pieces from taking up a fair amount of space. So one of the easiest ways to fix this problem is to break the shell up into two or three shells. But doing so is going to give us a seam. So what we can do is look at our object a little bit and see where we wouldn't mind having that seam. So we have a seam down here right now between 9 and 0. And I think it might be okay to have a seam right here, right where the six sort of lands and where this is about to curve. So what we can do is we can select that edge. So I know this strip of UVs is only one polygon wide, so I just select that edge, I come back here, and I could relax it again with the cut selected edges option on. Or even easier, I could just select that polygon to see where it is. Maybe select a few polygons going in that direction. And I, I can see that these are the polygons I want to tear off. And then I could just tear them off. No big deal. And so once I've torn that off, I can realign these again. And it lines up much more comfortably. And we have a lot more space to work with. Um, so... 
at a point like this is where you might want to use your discretion a little bit. For instance, if this piece wasn't so long, these other pieces could get a lot larger and take up some more UV space. But you want all your shells to be the same size relative to each other. Because if they are, it means it's going to be much easier to paint the seams out. Because otherwise your paintbrush changes size as you go from a small shell to a large shell. It's tricky to explain, but in general you want all your shells roughly the same size. And uh, you, you, you can play with the different options here. Like there's a preserve orientation option. If this shell was rotated at this angle and I told it to realign everything, if preserve preserve orientation is checked, it is not going to rotate any of the shells. But if that's unchecked, and I hit apply, it's going to try to rotate things so that they fit a little bit better. Not always in the most intelligent way, but it tries. So that's a little bit better. There's also this stretch to fit option. So you can, you can basically distort the UVs um, so that they take up more space, but they may not necessarily be proportional. And so usually once this is all laid out at the maximum size, I like to go in by hand and move them around just because sometimes you can find a little bit of savings that the algorithm doesn't find. But in general, it does a pretty good job. So there we go. We have uh, another object neatly UV mapped. And we can just look at it one more time just to make sure the numbers are all readable. So it looks like they are. So this is properly mapped. So we can just save our file. Now, earlier I hinted that it's not a problem that these objects are no longer in symmetry hierarchy. So it seems like it would be more difficult to do it this way because, well, it means I have to go and UV map this object now. I've already just UV mapped its its neighbor. You can see the hair that the polygons are flipped inside out. It's because we mirrored them over. So you can just reverse those normals. And the thing is, these objects are pretty much the same. They're almost identical geometry and hierarchy. So the cool thing is that we can basically select this object. Let's just find it in the hierarchy. And we can delete its UV tag. And then we can copy the tag over, just as, as simply as that. So I know that this is one arm and this is the other, and I can just drag this tag over. And if I drag the material over as well, it, uh, ooh, that looks a little weird, but it should have the exact same UV mapping, unless I did something wrong. Let's see what's going on. So I think it does have the same mapping. We may just need to run the relax command again. Yeah, because they were flipped over. So maybe this doesn't work every time. Maybe it only works sometimes. But I tried it earlier and it worked pretty well. So maybe you just need to go in and remap certain parts of the object. But for the most part, the backside as well as the stripper on the edge are fine. So. The best case scenario, obviously, is just to duplicate the object back over. And that's really not, that shouldn't be a problem because uh, these objects are not the hierarchical objects. This is a child. So this is also a child, which means there's nothing stopping me from copying the right large arm over here to left large arm, renaming it left large arm, and just zeroing out its coordinates. And it should all line up. Yep. And so once it's lined up like that, I think I just need to flip its size negative. And we have the object right there as well. So it's actually possible to copy the object over. And once we've copied it over, we, um, let's see, what's the coordinate of this? Negative 1039. So I'll just make it 1039 on this side and it should line up pretty well. Perfect. So once we have that, we can go into the UV map for this one and just flip everything around. 
And so that's how we'd get started UV mapping the other parts. I hope you enjoyed this recording. And until next time, see you.